Welcome to Ask Maureen, where we cover historical image analysis, genealogy, and how to work with your family photo collection. I'm Maureen Taylor, the photo detective, and I'll try to answer your questions. Hi, everyone. It is time for another episode of The Photo Detective. This is Facebook Live, and I use Be Live, which means that your questions, I can see them and we can answer them live. Today, my guest is Kurt Luther. And guess what? He runs a site called the Civil War Photo Sleuth, and it is so cool. I can't even believe that someone could conceive of this and make it real. So, Kurt, can you give us the sort of elevator speech about what this is and why you decided to create it? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, with Civil War Photo Sleuth, our goal is to try to rediscover the identities of um, all photographs of Civil War soldiers and sailors and folks from that era. And of course, you know, these photographs are amazing. 150 years ago, everyone knew who they were, but nowadays we've lost so many of these identities, maybe maybe 80, 90 percent of them. And our goal with this product is try to try to re rediscover those and get those identities back and, and learn the stories behind the faces. So we've created a website, civilwarphotosleuth.com, and it combines a few different things. Um, it, it has face recognition technology to help us match an unknown photograph to a gigantic uh, archive that we're building of identified photographs. Uh, right, right now we have more than 15,000 of them. It's also an online community, so people can sign up and help each other out. Uh, you can add photographs when you, if you already know their identities, or uh, you can try to identify unknown ones and uh, through that process kind of help each other out. The third thing it is, is just a, an exciting way to find interesting Civil War photographs. Maybe you have a Civil War ancestor. Uh, we have a powerful, powerful search tool where you can just type in a name, type in a regiment and see uh, what we have in the database, see if you might find a match. Well, a photo historian once said and wrote about it in his book that every Civil War soldier was photographed. I believe it. Yeah. There were what, 3,000 photographers working in the Union, in the North, and some of them went South. Right. It, it was such an exciting time for photography because, you know, it's right when the Civil War is breaking out and, you know, men are going off to war, they're being separated from their families. They want to have photos of their families to take with them. They want to send photos of themselves back. And just at this time, the technology uh, of photography is getting inexpensive enough that ordinary people can actually afford it. Uh, so these two things come together and it leads to this explosion of uh, portrait photography, which leads to, like you just said, um, almost everybody we think uh, taking at least one photo of themselves during that war era. In the North though, because there was a blockade in the South, correct? That's so right. they, the Union Army blocked photo supplies from going into the South. So that, there aren't as many photographs. Yes, um, from, from the Confederacy. From the South, from the Confederacy, we see uh, a lot of photography coming from uh, the very early part of the war before that blockade gets in place and the photographers can't get their chemicals and supplies anymore. Um, there was you know, a good amount of photography very early on and we have lots of those images surviving, but once the war gets underway, you're exactly right. Um, the vast majority of images that get produced um, outside of a few you know, um, uh, large areas like, like Richmond, the vast majority of photography is gonna be either in the, in, in the Union or, or Union photographers traveling uh, with armies in, in the Southern Confederacy. Well, I'm really hoping that this site can help me find images of my great, great grandfathers who served in the Civil War, one of which, according to his pension file, had red hair. Uh, <laughs> and I would love to see that, <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously it won't be red in the image, but, you know, still, 
it would be great to be able to see what he looks like. So I'm really, really hopeful. Um, I did come across some funny thing about a Civil War photograph one time. Uh, it was a man who had taken his picture and of course they folded it up in the envelope and they mailed it home because it mostly tintypes and tintypes really explode during this period. But he wrote to his wife, this is not a very good likeness. Don't show it to the children. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get a better one later. <laughs> Talk about, you know, times not changing. I, I, I'm sure I said something similar, you know, the last time my, my picture was taken. <laughs> exactly. Very few exactly. people are happy with it. But uh, back then, unfortunately, you know, you sat there and you stood in front of the photographer and you paid a good amount of money and you got your one, you know, your one version. And hopefully it was good enough because... Uh, they didn't have the ability to take 50 selfies like we do now. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I mean, there are a lot of Civil War photographs out there. You know, I'm always uh, not necessarily looking for them specifically, but, you know, when I go to photo shows, there's always um, people selling Civil War era pictures. Absolutely. And and I know some people locally who actually collect them, which is great. And I think that they're involved in your project. Uh, the Civil War collection at the Library of Congress is huge. So what is it called? The Lillenthal's? Uh, Lillenquist collection. Lillenquist. Lillenquist. Yeah. Amazing collection. Over a thousand images. Um, north and South. Um, white African-American men and women. All really pristine high quality, really uh, compelling images. Immigrants. And absolutely, right. But that's one of many archives that, uh, that we're trying to connect to and in order to enrich our database. Because you know, with, with identifying unknown photographs, basically <laughs> the bigger your database, the more identified images you have, the better. And right. you're, you're talking about my sweet spot here. Oh, exactly. yeah, right. <laughs> you, are, you are talking to the photo detective. <laughs> exactly. So we're trying to reach out broadly. Um, we have a link on our site to resources of many different digital archives. But, you know, the challenge is they're all kind of scattered in different places. Um, so hopefully with the power of this community and crowdsourcing, we can get lots of people to not only add from their own collections, but also bring in some of these images from other digitized archives that aren't yet part of ours. Right, so we have a question here, actually a comment from Wendy. Uh, it says, it's getting harder to find Civil War era pictures here in Northeast Pennsylvania. I'm assuming that's PA. And that's because a lot of collectors have been buying them up. And, and I will say that you used to be able to pick them up for just a couple of dollars. And now, the, you know, I see a Civil War photograph on eBay and, or at these shows that I go to, and they're, they're automatically three figures, 100, 200, $300. And I'm like, okay, let's take a step back. Right. Not necessarily, nothing significant about this picture. It's not an unusual uniform. It's not, an, you know, a, a unit that wasn't photographed. Right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword because on the one hand, it's exciting to see this growing interest and enthusiasm for the images. Um, I, one of my uh, partners on this project, Ron Coddington, who is the editor of Military Images Magazine. Great magazine. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, it's we, a great magazine. It's, uh, we have a column called uh, Photo Sleuth that also focuses on you know traditional methods as well as digital methods for identifying stuff. But anyway, Ron, um, in his latest book, uh, Faces of the Civil War Navy, he has this nice history of the Carte de Visite. And, and he talks about how, you know, this, there's, this, there's been this very growing, recent grown interest in, in Civil War photography, maybe in the last, you know, 30, 40 years uh, that just didn't exist. And historians are finally also starting to recognize um, the, the value of this visual material uh, as, you know, historical documentation that, that we can learn so much from this. So maybe well, that's down into the, into the collecting world as well. Right, so I have to say that one of the most startling things I learned, you know, when I first became a historian, uh, 
you know, I loved history as a kid, but it was all about the Civil War was the black and the gray. I mean, the the blue and the gray, right? Yep. The North and the South. And these were the uniforms. Right. And then suddenly I'm learning more about the Civil War and I'm seeing what every unit had a different uniform <laughs> and they were different colors. And there were the my favorite other Zouaves, of course. Yeah, we had a big zouave with the sort of Turkish pants and the little fez, and you think you wore that into battle, <laughs> dude? <laughs> I know it's amazing. Um, and uh, you might have seen uh, there's there's a couple of really nice new books out from um, Ron Field about early war Union uniforms and just this incredible variety that you're talking about. You know, with with zouaves, but also of course. You know, lots of Union regiments wearing gray and uh, yes. you know, problems that that created in some of the early battles um, where, you know, one side didn't really know who it was fighting or not fighting with this crazy. How, how did they know? Answer that question for me, Kurt. How did they know when they were on that battlefield and everyone is wearing similar outfits, similar colors? The, the sad news is they didn't always know. And I, I think there's a couple of stories from, from Bull Run and, and maybe Ball's Bluff for some of those very early battles where there was friendly fire. Um, I guess the best thing you could count on was, you know, if they're on your side of the battlefield, probably don't shoot them. But if they're on the other side pointing at you, then maybe point that point your gun that way. <laughs> maybe, maybe. We have a few more questions and comments. Sure. So we have uh, Mark Rachels wants to know, what about women? Do you have pictures of any of the Vivandries, the yeah. women who dressed up like men? Yes, actually, um, we're we're very excited to get images of women, and um, not just uh, not just the women who dressed as soldiers, but also women that were involved in the war in, in many other ways: um, civilians, nurses, um, uh, yeah, the Vivandiers. All all that's fair game because we feel like you know any image from the Civil War era is potentially a valuable, well, you know, cultural artifact, but also right. help to solve these mysteries. You might have an image of somebody in civilian clothing, but it matches the face of another soldier in uniform, or you have images of family members, and then, or you have images with the same photographer that help narrow down locations. So right. pieces of the puzzle that help us answer these questions. Right, but I, I just have to caution everyone, just because a face matches most of the points doesn't mean that they're actually a relative. Um, all of the clues have to add up for it to be a match. In other words, your ancestor, you have to put them in the right place in the right time, in the right uniform. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because I would like to say something about um, you know misinformation and and trying to strive for for accurate identifications. That's um, right. We made a conscious choice with the software that the software never automatically identifies anybody. Good. Because first of all, it's not good enough to really do that. It's looking at a face, but there are way more clues there in that image than the face. Like That's right. uniforms, backdrops, format of the image, all those clues. But also we, I, we think that you kind of have an obligation and you have some accountability when you make an identification. You know, you're putting yourself out there and saying, I think this is the same person. So if we find that information later on that this name is attached to this face, we wanna be able to connect that back to you and say, well, well, th this person said that they're the same, therefore I, I blame them. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark Rachel's got back and said that he has a large collection that he needs to upload. Fantastic. So here's the thing, guys. It's free. So you can use Civil War Photo Sleuth for free. So let's go to your site. Absolutely. Uh, actually, the first off, there's a community on Facebook as well. So let's share that. Uh, right. A second. Facebook page with it's called Civil War Photo Sleuth. So you can go to Facebook and you can become a follower. Yep, that's the best way to get our updates on. Uh, what we're doing with the software, you know, we're always making improvements and changes and right. uh, also just general photo sleuthing tips. Right. Don't take all my business away from me, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, um, I think of us as, you know, very mutually beneficial. Yes. Not yes. For knowledge yes. out there, the better for everyone. Exactly. Definitely. All right. Let's show the site. And that's one of the reasons we're keeping it free. Like we want to keep the barriers as low as possible. We don't want anyone to be scared away from adding an image that might help somebody else out later on down the road. So one of the people that's watching is Kate Keller. And Kate, I follow you on Facebook and know that you're a big orphan photo person, um, the same as I am. And it, she says that she has a number of CDVs in her photo rescue collection that have Civil War stamps on the back. Are these the type of items that your website would be interested in having upload? I'm imagining yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. If these are CDVs that have tax stamps, then that's gonna date those to the Civil War era, which is exactly what we're looking for, 1864 to 66. Right. And uh, we also allow people to upload front and back views so that um, we'll have that information in the tax stamp that can be useful for, for dating that image later on. It can be useful for many things. I can think of a whole series of articles I could write about things on your site, Kurt. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's go to the site. So yeah. I'm logged in. Obviously, my account is photo detective. <laughs> no surprise. Right. Uh, let's go to the home, which is the dashboard. And this is show. Oh, Sean Nolan just uploaded an image. That's great. Nice. So we're looking at the feed and you're seeing images from other users being uh, added in real time. You exactly. Exactly. And see, you know, a little more detail. And it's a copy. So this, this image by Rod Stanley is a copy of an earlier image. Right. And it looks like a really cool one. We've got some great visual clues there. Yeah. Nice hardy hat with some uh, hat brass uniform. Um, uh, he has uh, some, looks like a uh, hat insignia with a branch badge and um, maybe a company letter. And he's got some kind of a sword. Um, Looks like maybe a cavalry sword. That would uh, make sense with the... So we can zoom in on the image. I'm hoping you can all see this. You can zoom in on the image. We can see that he actually has pale eyes. Right. Right. That's always a fun thing to talk about. You can add discussion to it if you if there is any. Right. Um, history of the image, if there's any right. added. And this was added just just this week. Huh. Uh, and this is a family member, it appears, source, family. So you can add a photograph very, very easily. And I'm going to go through my collection and see what I've got, uh, not of my family collection, but things that I have up from this time period and, and try to upload them. You can do a JPEG, a GIF, or a PNG, choose the file, obviously put as much information in the image source as possible, correct? Yeah, I, I really strongly encourage that. Um, at some point, Pretty soon, we might even make that mandatory. But I, I think we really want to make sure people know where these images come from. You know, this is supposed to be a research source, and we want people to be able to track these images down later. So we want to search images. So I'll search uh, my bad news person who never appears anywhere. <laughs> uh, he served in the union, so I'm going to narrow that down. Uh, he served in Massachusetts. And I don't have I don't have all that information with me at this moment. But if I did, I could search. And what you're looking for are you can narrow it down by even if you're doing research. Say you want to see everyone in a no coat or a dark coat or a light coat or a hat number. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a client at one point who had this fabulous image of a man. It was an amber type and he was sitting in a studio. And of course, this is a pretty typical thing. You're going to have to say, oh, I've seen this already. Huh. Uh, and he had his hat on the table. And on the top of the hat was the state from which he served and the regiment number and the company number. Awesome. It was all on the hat. And she said, I don't have I don't know anyone that served in the Civil War. And I, I put her, I took her over. It was at a conference. I took her over to the booth for fold three. And I said, they have the military records. I said, just go down this list of everyone served and see who matches. Right. Um, I, I, I mean, she had everything she needed except the name of the person. So uh, we're going to put Peter Taylor in here. I know he was in the Union Army, Massachusetts. He served in the infantry that much. I know he was a private, so I can uncheck all of those things. 
So the more information you know, the better. So the more research you do on your Civil War ancestors, the better uh, mm -hmm. for searching. And I know I'm going to come up with nothing, but <laughs> we'll, we'll plug it in. Fingers crossed. I doubt it. Nothing. Uh, <laughs> a big fat nothing. Yeah. But there, there may be more. And so it's really and a then process in, of narrowing down, right? Right. So right. The more you have, the less work you do later on once you get the results. Right. And then you've created this amazing resource of other types of Civil War photographs uh, where you can find them. Like, for instance, well, if you don't own any images to be part of this site, you can simply find some of these great archives that are already out there and help add the images to our collection. Right. Become a volunteer for Civil War Photo Sleuth, like add the Lilinquist collection is a lot of work. Exactly. But it's so much fun. <laughs> I know. Even and if you're adding in an identified photograph, um, you still are going to see the search results coming up of similar looking faces. And it's just a lot of fun. You know, you know who this person is, but you see all these similar looking folks. It just, it, it leads to that, you know, um, rabbit hole, that Wikipedia rabbit hole of, oh, I want to read about this guy. Oh, I want to read about this woman. And then it just keeps going and going. <laughs> right. Uh, we have another, another comment. Paula says, I have a Civil War tintype helpfully labeled as Grandpa Colbert's brother. It's a beautiful photo, but I can't ID it further. Um, Paula, I'd love to help you with that. You've got Grandpa Colbert's brother. We can take it. We can make this happen. Uh, so email me about this and right. upload it to uh, Photo Sleuth. Yeah, let's get it up there and, and see if we can try to crowdsource the answer to this. But yeah, that sounds promising. We've got some nice some nice nuggets to start with there. Maybe we'll go to some census records and see who we can narrow down. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, there's some other clues in there too. So Kurt, what else would you like to say about your site? How, long, how old is it? Sure, oh, I could talk about it all day. <laughs> so the site, um, we, we, we came up with the idea a few years ago, um, we've been, working on you know, getting a functional prototype ever since. And we had our official launch in August. So just a few months ago, we were over at the uh, National Archives building in, in Washington, DC. And uh, they were wonderful hosts for us. And uh, we had a, a fun event there where people came in, they brought images. Um, we were able to identify one from that Library of Congress collection and uh, what was fun about that was some of the Library of Congress employees came to the event and they, they fully appreciated this. And then also um, Mr. Tom Lillenquist, the, the donor of the collection also came and we were able to say, hey, this uh, image that you contributed, now we know who this, who this soldier is. And that was a lot of fun for everybody. It's a good feeling. Yeah, it really is. You know, it's, uh, we, we all wanna be remembered, I think. And uh, images are just so powerful and such a compelling way to, to see and understand who these people are. Yeah, I, I love your site. I, I read about it somewhere and I started playing around with it and I was like, I have to get Kurt on the Photo Detective Podcast <laughs> without a doubt. I mean, there is a photo identification community. Uh, I know people from all over the world who do photo identification and are working on some really cool projects and definitely i count you amongst them um, we're, we're all working towards the same goal which is no unidentified photos ever absolutely. again i think we can do it it's definitely an ambitious goal but i think it's a goal we're striving towards and uh you know this site is it's all about community there is technology face recognition is great having this big archive is great but it's all about people, users coming in, being willing to contribute their knowledge, being willing to help each other out. Um, that's the only way we're gonna get answers to all It is the only way, right, exactly, yeah. I mean, as I tell people, I just, you know, just this fall went to one of those big outdoor antique sh shows and could not leave a big bundle of photos on the table. They were a dollar each and they all had names on them and it just, it just crushed me <laughs> to see them on the table. And then I spent like two days last weekend scanning them all. And I'm like, okay, now what? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I hear you. Yeah. Um, 
every every time I I'm online and somebody posts an image, you know, part of the back of my mind gets gets tugged, and I think, oh, I better put that on the site. Who knows when I'm going to see that again? And that could so, be an ancestor. <laughs> so, do you collect? Do you collect Civil War images? Yes, I'm not a huge collector, but I do have a nice, uh, modest collection of of Civil War. Um, Carts to visit is is really the the format that I'm most excited about. I love being able to see, oftentimes, you know, who the photographer is on the back, and um, it's uh, it's kind of like uh, you know the social media of the 1860s. <laughs> Pretty much, I mean, there was it was called cardamania <laughs> because people were so crazy about it. My my favorite statement that I've read about um, the Carte de visite era was that Walt Whitman was there's something about his personality but you'll, you'll know what i mean when i tell you that he could it was said that he could not pass by a photo studio without stopping in <laughs> and what does that say about walt uh-huh he uh he was very photogenic i guess <laughs> i guess and he liked to be picture have his picture uh -huh. taken uh-huh oh that's awesome well he had a very uh, yeah very distinctive uh, he did he did Please. So uh, I've been talking with Kurt Luther of Civil War Photo Sleuth, an amazing new site. I know it's taken you years to put it together. And I've been working on a, a site that's going to launch this week that is not, uh, it's a local history site, it's somewhat along the same lines. Um, oh, exciting. But, yeah, it's very exciting. It's been, it's, it's been a long haul, but as you know, oh, as you know about these things. But it will be very, very rewarding to get it out there. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I'll let you know when it's out there. I'll, I'll do a whole broadcast on it, I think, in the next few weeks. But anyway, we're talking with Kurt Luther of the Civil War Photo Sleuth. This is your chance to ask him questions. It is be live so he can answer them live. If you don't have a chance to watch this live, you can watch the re-record, the, you know, the recorded version later or you can listen to it on iTunes as part of the Photo Detective podcast. Awesome. So Kurt, I love your site. I love the resources. I think this is something that uh, the genealogy and history world has needed for a long time. Something that focuses just on the, uh, the Civil War. You know, obviously I've done the research on the, the Rev War people, but Civil War, there's been so much and it's so many places. I know at one point I thought, you know, I'm from this little state, Rhode Island, right? How many units are there? <laughs> and at one point I thought, well, this was maybe a decade ago, I thought, oh, I know where the collections of the Civil War photos are here. And I know that there's some great collections. Yeah. And wouldn't it be great to do a book of all the photographs of all the uniforms of all the people from Rhode Island, blah, 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 blah. And I thought, well, that's great. And I started looking around and then I got to Pennsylvania where it was like I don't know, 380 something units or whatever. And I thought, uh, no, but you've done it. <laughs> You're doing it. Yeah. It's not a book. It's an interactive website that we can all participate in. And it furthers our knowledge of our ancestors. It makes these photographs, you know, hopefully identified. And it gives us a lot of information on civil on the Civil War. It, it's been sorely lacking, and uh, this is just fabulous. So I know I keep saying, "Oh, it's great! Oh, it's God. great! It's great!" It really is great. So go <laughs> on the Civil War Photo Sleuth and try it out. It doesn't cost anything at this point. That you, might change in the future as it gets a little more expensive. We're gonna try. We're gonna try and keep it free as long as we absolutely can. Like I said, you know that really is gonna hopefully keep the bar low and get as many people contributing as possible. And that's going to help everybody out. Um, one, one thought that came to mind uh, when you were talking about uh, just, you know, even within Rhode Island and all the, all the variety of uniforms and things like that. Um, one of the things you can do on the site that I haven't talked about too much is, uh, is tagging. So when you add a new image and you're looking at that soldier's uniform, uh, you can add, tags for the clues that you see you know the uniform button oh, let's go to that the hats and the weapons and the insignia for the ranks and that does two things Under one add photo yeah, to, yeah right so just um yeah just go ahead and pick one and then uh click upload 
So yeah, I don't really have one to upload at this okay. point. Uh, but if we go to search photos or home, we'll go to home. Yeah, you can get a feel for those. Tags. Sean must have tagged things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, scroll down just a little more. Evidence. No evidence added for this guy yet. So for this guy, you know, we look at him, we see, okay, he's got a nice uh, union frock coat. And I, it's a little bit small, but I don't think I see any rank chevrons. So he's probably a union private. Nine button jacket. Uh-huh. Right. Um, and so I think if we go to search, you search can photos, that's where you can see. So you can fill right. in when you add your photo, all of this. If you know the coat color because it's been hand colored, if you have a number on the hat, what branch it might be, chevrons. Or, and even if you don't know what branch it is, check off these boxes. Is that what you're saying, Sean? Um, um, Kurt? Yeah. So, so it does two things. One is it, it lets people know what is in your image so that they can search for it later. They can say, show me all the soldiers, you know, who have the cross cannons emblem on their hat and they can see all those images for reference. So that's one thing. The second thing it does is it uses those clues to create search filters. So if you say he's got, um, uh, shoulder straps with two bars, the system knows that that means captain. And mm -hmm. so when those search results come back, it's going to show you only search results of soldiers who held the rank of captain at some point during the war. And it's, right. it's going to even handle demotions and promotions because we have the entire military record for each soldier. So if he was a captain at any point during the war, even if not in that photograph of the of the known soldier, we're still going to get results. And I so, see results right there. Right. So what I did was search just one another way to search if you don't, because there's a lot of unidentified images in here. Mm -hmm. I searched two bars on yep. the shoulder, and all of these matches came up because that is what people checked off mm -hmm. when they uploaded right the image. And then you can click any one of these to see more information. Now that's an odd <laughs> That sure is odd. Uh, yeah. Um, not necessarily right. Must have been a very young soldier. <laughs> mm, yeah, it calls into question the identity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here's William Lawton. And so they filled out Corporal. Isn't that Corporal? Yeah. Um, I think so. I can't see. Yeah, CPT. Ah, Captain. 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 Uh, U.S. 33rd Illinois Infantry Company I. And the source of this was the American Civil War Research Database. So there's even a way to cite the source mm -hmm. for the image, which is great. Right. Yeah, we think all those links could be helpful. Um, but at the same time, the goal is not for our site to be a completely comprehensive database of all Civil War knowledge because, you know, that's impossible, A. Right. And, and B, other sites do that better. So we're trying to specialize just in the photos and their identities, but for more information about the regiments and the battles and the, even the detailed biographies, um, we can link to other sources that really specialize in that stuff. Well, we have, while we've been chatting about your site, we have a whole list of questions. Oh, super. So if you don't mind if we go a little longer than 30 minutes. Not at all. Uh, first off, Paula wrote and said, how do I send me an e How does she send me an email? Just do photo detective at MaureenTaylor.com or go to my website, MaureenTaylor.com, Paula, and you can send me a message. Debbie Putnam wants to know, who made most uniforms? Uh, like which company or which, which, uh, yeah. Was there a company or were they made by, there, I mean, there, there's a variety, right? It's yeah. Right. There were tons of, uh, uniform contractors because, uh, when the war broke out, there were, um, only 12,000 regular army soldiers in the union and, uh, Lincoln wanted to expand that to 75,000 and then, and then many more. And there just weren't enough uniforms. So the call went out to any uniform contractors out there in the in the North, if you wanna make uniforms, we'll take them. And uh, all kinds of stuff started coming in. Uh, the red, the blue cloth went out real quick and, and you started seeing that gray and, and other choices, which of course caused problems. Um, 
But today it, it creates this interesting wealth and diversity of, of uniforms that can be useful for identification, right? Uh, for example, Rhode Island is known for this sort of, um, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like a smock type uh, shirt that um, Ambrose Bergside was particularly excited about because I think he had uh, business interests in the, in the clothing industry before the war. So he had these fancy uniforms for, for his regiments and uh, now they're really nice clues as to the soldier's um, you know, home state. That's great. Marjorie wants to know, was there ever an organized system for photographing soldiers, i.e. a photographer assigned to take portraits of them? There were. Um, there were a, a small number of um, army photographers, um, actually I think a very small number, who the government actually employed to follow around um, the armies and, and take photographs. Uh, some of those were, were like documentary field photography type images. So, you know, what's, what does the campsite look like? What are the uh, regiments in formation look like? Um, what does the scenery and surroundings look like? In terms of portraiture though, um, more often I think you would see photos made either by um, photographers living in the nearby towns who saw the opportunity and mm. you know, ran down to the camps and said, hey, uh, you know, um, I'm available if you want to get your image made. Or um, I think maybe in a few cases, there might have been some portrait photographers that, that followed um, with the armies as well. Um, but I don't think it was too common. I think the vast majority of these portraits were not organized, but rather just more opportunistic. Um, soldiers getting a few minutes off and going into town, getting those likenesses made and sent back to their families, or very often before they went off to war at their hometowns. Right. Right, in uniform before they left. Which can create some, you know, confusions in the identification process because when you see this location, you got to interpret what it really means. This soldier is, is in wearing a union uniform, but he's, uh, his photographer is based in Louisiana. So what's going on here? Well, it must have been after the uh, union occupation of Louisiana. Mm -hmm. or, um, tons and tons of soldiers with back marks from Philadelphia and Washington, D.C., well, they didn't necessarily live there or um, grow up there, although certainly many did, but those were major um, recruiting sites and training uh, sites. And so lots of soldiers passed through there on their way to whatever actual battlefield assignment they'd end up at. Mm. Deborah wants to know if you have a document identifying the service of a person in the photo, is there a way of uploading an image of that link to the picture? Ah. Uh, so the image of the document itself, that's really cool. Um, we don't yet have a way for you to actually attach that file. But, but you, you will. <laughs> well, it sounds like there's a need, yeah. Um, in the meantime, you could maybe post a link. If you can get that image added somewhere else, um, you can post a link to that image when you identify the soldier on our site. Uh, so you can always you know, link to other sources of information that are out there. But for now, the only images that you can upload um, are the portraits themselves. So you could include that link in the discussion. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Or even in the identity, um, the profile that you create for that soldier when you mm -hmm. add them into the database. Great. Well, we've been talking, or I've been talking with Kurt Luther of the Civil War Photo Sleuth. Uh, .com website and Facebook page. I hope you've enjoyed it. Kurt, thank you so much for joining me today. Sure. I have been waiting weeks to <laughs> get you on the show. I've been just as excited. So I'm really glad uh, that you had me and, and I hope that I've been able to uh, get a few more folks interested in being part of our community. I, I think so, without a doubt. And uh, once the podcast comes out, you'll get a few more, I'm sure. So thank you very much, all of you, for asking your questions and for joining me today. I will not be broadcasting live next week. It is Thanksgiving. I will be in the kitchen. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, Marie. Thank you for watching and listening. 
You can submit your questions for future episodes using the Ask Maureen button on MaureenTaylor.com or through any of my social media contacts. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as The Photo Detective and on Facebook at Maureen Photo Detective. I hope you'll come back for the next show. Don't forget to send me your questions.